Hangouts YouTube channel. Remember to subscribe, follow, and also share this video. Today we are talking about does faith matter when raising a child? Does it really impact a child in a positive way or a negative way, whichever faith it is? And the first question we should ask ourselves is what does faith do to a child? And in my view, is Faith it sells your child false hope that there is a fictional character up there that's watching over him, so he doesn't need to worry about what what's coming. That there is a fictional character someone watching over him. And what what does faith really do to a child? First of all, it's a very moral to bring the idea of faith when once raising the child because in the first place this child will grow up with intimidation with fear. And as that child grows up, this fear and intimidation will somehow make the child depressed in a way. Because one, this faith is all about believing in something without evidence. That uh, this child grows up knowing that uh, God, the supposed God, is somehow watching. And if the child, if she, if the child uh, does something moral, he or she, in the near future, will be punished. So you can imagine that uh, teaching this child about faith, and once that child continues growing, he or she will develop a, an attitude in life in that, in that um, they believe alone, that, that belief that you put in a child, that they will be tortured. This God is, who, 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 who is, the, who is taught the child that this God is good. But once the child grows, he or she develops that to that. If this God is very good, why, why then? should he torture through the idea of having hell in the first place. So for, for our case, uh, in our case mostly the third world countries, it is also a very bad idea of raising up a child in such a way because this child, as, as, as he or she becomes an adult, will not like uh, work hard say, in life because he has been taught to believe that uh, he or she will enjoy life in the afterlife. So the idea of enjoying life in the afterlife will make her not work hard because of that idea alone. Number two, this child will, because of faith will believe will not make people accountable in his or her life because let's say let's say in the case of leaders, he, will, he or she will not account, will not make the leaders accountable because he or she because of faith will believe that uh, God who is watching will make will make him and the nation at large will make the, the leaders accountable. So instead of making of, of making their leaders accountable, that's why Africans we are suffering because of that not whereby we are not holding holding our leaders accountable because of the faith that we have been brought up to believe. Such uh, there is no need because it is God's plan anyway that they are the way they are because in the afterlife God is going to punish them. So I, in my opinion, it's very moral. And uh, we should try to bring in the idea of open-mindedness, whereby children are nurtured. You don't have to be moral by religious. You can still be very moral. We have, uh, you don't have to believe in something to be moral. Because once a child is born, there is an automatic natural conscience. One is born with conscience. And one knows what is right and, and what is wrong. So don't need religion. To, to raise a child. I also think that raising a child in faith is wrong because it somehow teaches these children to judge other people wrongly. So there's at times you can just listen to children giving stories that they have had. Mostly they talk from how they hear their parents talking or older people. It can be something very, you know, small or natural. Then you will hear the children are muting it with faith, with the devil, with witchcraft. And then I think it hinders this child's mind from growing in a positive way. 
just don't focus on faith, just focus on right and wrong and the consequences. If you just have the bad, there are consequences. But just focus on the good and the bad. Don't focus on the faith, because that's you. Really we see the child. Thanks. I wanted to piggyback from where we were left off. And um, I think raising children with faith teaches them to believe the right things for the wrong reason. Religious upbringing focuses on what to believe rather than why you believe it. So those children foster or they develop blind obedience and reverence for authority rather than critical thinking or questioning. I think it is more sustainable for somebody to be a critical thinker, for them to be equipped with the tools to handle whatever situation comes their way. You see, when you tell somebody something, you tell them never, never cross the road when the light says red and you don't explain to them why that is the case, then they won't be equipped to handle the road when the lights spoil and there's no guidance there. Right? So that's the problem with raising children religiously, is that it emphasizes the what rather than the why or the how. Think of it this way. Imagine you are a supervisor at a workplace and you've got this employee who usually churns out a lot of work when you are there with them, when you are uh, loading over them, when you are micromanaging and supervising them there, they usually become very productive. But the moment you disappear as their supervisor, they stop working. And the reason they do it is because you, as the external source of their behavior, are the one that causes them to comply. It's just obedience, that they're doing it out of obedience. But think of another employee who loves their job. Maybe this is their natural inclination. They have a gift for that job. Maybe they fix computers and they just love doing it. They love it when a customer comes, gives them a broken down computer, and then they are able to bring it back to life. So whether or not the supervisor is there, this person is able to churn out a high amount of work. So I think that's the same psyche we use when we raise children, that you don't want an external moral authority to cause children to comply. And the external moral authority in this case is God or religious teachings. Instead, you want them to think for themselves. You want them to focus on their humanity and you want them to be able to apply those principles regardless of the situation. So that is why I think faith is terrible. It teaches children what to be rather than how to be. So, um, yes. For me, it's okay. If I say yes, um, I just do the principle of the human spirit as the way that um, essential question that we always have that children that are to, to, to satisfy. Mm -hmm. And um, it could be drawn from simple shades. Um, as we are children, we, we love fairy tales because it, has, it answers hard questions that we cannot, we cannot um, fathom. I mean, if someone tells you there's no God, it's all right, fine. <laughs> the hope that that, that it, um, is this intellectual attachment that we have evolved as human beings have? That's why religion, um, religious stories, I would say, and, um, and fairy tales and stories, they, they, they kind of, um, they kind of suppress this scientific reason that, um, maybe our parents don't want us to experience right in the young, but then um, as we grow older, as, um, <laughs> Tend to, to come those we start um, realizing these things. Um, even if you look at Nancy Jam, they were they were Catholics. I mean, uh, predominantly they were Catholics. And um, this which and here they were to, to harness that to harness that uh, that energy into the the will to feed the Jews. So in that way, religion um, 
uh, also organized religion, makes like soldiers, makes like to make soldiers out of people. And uh, we don't want to look at the extreme ones, the moderate one, where people can follow others, people can, can, can work together, can team up. And uh, a sad part of it is the authoritarian, the, the authority that was around religion is, um, what do we say, it does not exist in basic terms, um, which leaves a vacuum of uh, what it is wrong or what is or what it is right. And um, since God is an ambiguous statement, it leaves uh, a very good room for people to, to think of anything to put into there. So, to me, it has some advantages and it has some disadvantages. Um, morals, it has its advantages, it has its disadvantages. Um, but a major part of it, I would stress, is the leaders. The, that, um, that, uh, that appetite to, sub, to, to, to limit the existential crisis within us so that we don't collapse. Oh, let me let me try and be brief. Uh, just to respond, not to respond per se, but to, to yeah, to respond to what you have said. Uh, you can read uh, on morals. Religion can make you do some things which can be good, but religion can also make you do things which are immoral. Therefore, religion cannot be a source of morality because if I can choose to kill you based on my religion, I can choose not to kill you based on my religion. Therefore, religion is not the one kind of thing, but kill you not. It's yeah. mainly polarization. Okay. Uh, number two, uh, evidence is contrary. Uh, more, uh, and I think that is part of the last question the moderator is going to ask. The societies. If you, want, uh, if you look at society currently that are more religious, and those ones which are more secular, just ask an average Kenyan, yeah. why would they want to take their kids to, for, to study and to work? Is it you got a bit in a or is it Western countries which are or Finland or Australia which are more east? So evidence is contrary that religious society is. However, to still money point, religion is a very good social mobilizer, just like any other social aspect, right? Mm -hmm. Like our, our politics is based on tribe. So if I want to mobilize people, uh, I have to make them give them an imaginary enemy like, uh, like our politician do. We have to start by defining terms. What is pain? Pain is living without evidence. Yeah. I think by that definition, it becomes, it just becomes obvious how you say pain. It's pain is living without evidence. And if you have evidence, it becomes knowledge. Um, however, why is it wrong to do that? And, and also to try to hear us about religious pain. Uh, so the question is, is it okay? Is it okay? Uh, to raise that, uh, to raise that, in a religious setting, in a religious setting, that them to pay. Um, number one, the problem I have with that, it gives them a worse view of life, or a, a bias. What we say, they need to, uh, it, 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 it diminishes their critical thinking, because it makes them, it just teaches them not to question things. It, it leads them to blind obedience. The Bible says, we go to practice. No questioning why, no thinking about it, no thinking about the law. And that's why you invite people in Kenya, if you argue with them and you're like beating them in any argument, not if they're religious, they will always come in, but the Bible says. Mm -hmm. That's what not. <laughs> but the Bible says. Because they, they are thinking it as, oh, if it's written in the Bible, it must be true. Well, there are a lot of horrific things that uh, we have discussed in the previous videos and discussed in the future videos of, that are in the Bible that. Like it says, you can kill people for just working on Sabbath. I don't think there's a Christian who believes that. Mm -hmm. So, and the fact that the Christians, they are, they are, most Christians don't think it's okay to kill someone who works on Sabbath. Yet it's written there, next to the Ten Commandments. <laughs> it tells you we are not using that by other guidance. Mm -hmm. It speaks to the supremacy of secular morality. They use it whether they think they're using it or not. Finally, uh, it negates the value of this life. So when you bring up a kid in a religious city, what it does is there's a life after there. So um, and it gives them a large sense of justice. So you find like someone, let's say someone, someone's maybe kid has been killed by a neighbor. It's a very huge injustice. Or even look at things like uh, genocides or tribal clashes. 
So what people, instead of people pursuing justice, like they are readers who pursue these tribal crashes, let's take them to court. If you don't have a court, you are to Let's seek justice here on earth. People will be like, no more chair, no more. And that one constitutes a very, a very bad sense of uh, justice in the sense that you don't value like that. And you see, people who are politicians, are politicians who are very more, okay, they are no politicians with models anyway in the world, but I was like, take advantage of that thinking. They'll say, I can get away with putting this tribe again, and this time they kill each other as long as I get my way to power. And then they will pay to go to help them, and then I will get away with it. Uh, very final, final, final is, uh, I want to say, you can, um, the, the other point you was trying to make is, it's a good social, not mobilized, but it's, it pro religion provides social settings, or social, social welfare and social setup. Uh, so, what I would say that, the reason it does in them is because it's the only thing you have to do. On Sunday, even me as a atheist, I have probably nice thing there is no show that is open on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Everybody is in church. All my friends go to church. All my everybody goes to church. So it's a it's it's the only people you have to interact with. It's the only people. So if you're in a country where uh, everybody is a Muslim, you would think Islam provides social. It's the only one that provides social atmosphere, social safety. If you're in a country that is here, you think oh, it is in this very good position. But the truth is. If you're also in a country where there is no religion, you guys are going to find social activities, social engagement, social means to do. And that is mostly pronounced in the rural cities of Kenya, where our mothers and our maybe they, they everything of every aspect of their life revolves around uh, faith and church, whether they like it or not. Yeah, so faith on children is unnecessary. And finally, it also makes them it's anti-science. Faith is generally anti-science. In, the, in terms of thinking. Because science tells you, look for evidence, do research, look for evidence. Let that evidence inform your thinking, your beliefs, and your conclusions. Faith tells you, this is the conclusion. Go and look for evidence that's important. <laughs> because you have to believe first, and then now you know. And that is why it, it brings a lot of problem dissonance. Because someone's belief, like, by the way, is the best part, it's the good one of God. Then you read them, you read for them a verse that's of slavery, murder, or of people who are not bad in this part of the world, then they get cognitive dissonance because they have started with the conclusion that the Bible is a good book. And then now the evidence that you're presenting is contrary, and they cannot reconcile those, those two days. So faith should be kept far away from any rational human being. Okay, I think we wish for it. First of all, it, it gives the chance. Like waste time, it was the, the challenge the, the challenge time. Like like I'm I'm from PC. I was I was trained in a in an SBA. You know there you don't work from Friday sunset to Saturday Sunday sunset. You don't work, you don't read. So even when I was a kid, I had, a, I had an exam on Monday. I was in class six, I had an exam. exam. <laughs> <laughs> My mom, my mom told me, man, you don't, you don't, on Saturday, on, on Saturday day, you don't do any work. You go, you go to church, God, I know God will help you, you pass the exam. So one day, the exam was there, and I was seeing stars. Wait God, now, 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 <laughs> yeah, thank you. So, for me, I have my own experience and also from my kin. In fact, my kin nowadays is surprising me. <laughs> it's coming with the funny song, Baby Jesus. <laughs> Sometimes I look at some, I find he got the, the answer correct because he get right. Who created you? That's how. I think it's as you right. Who created you? God. Get right. So, what can do this nonsense? <laughs> so, you are playing my challenge for the being that are very stupid to believe that was created by God. And yet, the teacher, even those who said those exams, even those who make those tests, Testable, they have no evidence. 
they know now it's just a plain word. So at the time you are coming to play my child, to believe he was hated. <laughs> you believe him at least a uh, good as you are born. Exactly. Instead of saying you are hated, <laughs> and you are telling no, no, you have no happiness. So I'm doing him some funny, <laughs> funny silly songs. <laughs> About this, that you cannot even verify that no one knows whether Jesus existed. We only just think he existed because there is a book written about him. Just the way maybe we can see a book written about Spider Man. We think Spider Man existed. <laughs> so, first of all, come, on, come up with the evidence, but not about faith. Faith to me, the definition of faith is believing in without evidence. That means if you believe something that without evidence, when I call you a stupid or a fool, I'm that. Because it's only a fool who can believe something without evidence. <laughs> give me one million, I will return it to, to you tomorrow. And then you give me. You don't know me, I'm a stranger to you, but you give me. So, that definition, I will call you a stupid or a fool. Because you just give me without, without any proof, without any... You have no, you have done nothing. There is no analysis you have done about me so that you may be able to know whether I can be able to give it to return it back to you. So that is foolishness. So to believe something without any evidence or without using even a single logic, that is foolish to me. And in the same foolish you are teaching my children. The same thing I was scared when I was young. I will, it was very hard for me to sleep alone. During the night, because I was told there is something called the Masiro. Masiro, maybe it's like a monster. There is a Masiro. When you move out during the night, that Masiro will come and destroy you. So I was very scared even to see the Baron because of that thing. So you brainwash a child, you scare a child, and that traumatizes a child. I was very scared. I could not be able to sleep alone. When, when my brother left, I was just crying alone because I knew Masimo will come and eat me. <laughs> the same case, when I grew, up, I grew up, I was told, when you are not born again, the devil will attack you. So every time when I'm alone in a, a room, I was fearing the magic can come. <laughs> When I hear some noise in the, in the room, I thought it's a, a machine, it's a demo that are approaching. I try to pray hard. If they don't disappear, I try to go to my neighbor. Because I was scared to post pain. And if I was scared, I held another eye in the When you have Jesus, the demons, they cannot approach you. So that I held another confidence from a big being. So I was I was given a baby that was scaring me, and then I was given another course of baby imagination that pulls away my worry. So I get confident that because I have Jesus, I can also go and displace devil from the city because I'm more powerful than the devil himself. Because the Jesus who is inside me is more powerful than the devil. So I may came to scare me. Another man of Jesus came to give me confidence that, that the previous enemy are powerful than you. So that is how we are, we are telling children. Things that are imaginary, things that are very stupid, you cannot verify, you cannot prove anything. So right now I'm very angry to see how the education curriculum are training our children. Things that are very nonsense. <laughs> and if you say contrary, you will get it wrong. <laughs> Sing this wrong. <laughs> if you are Muslim, do this and this. If you do according to the Christian, you will get it wrong. So, I don't know what I can say about that. <laughs> but education in government should be taken that serious.
I, I, I wanted to give a quick rebuttal to Nikki here, uh, but we encourage divergent opinions. In fact, I'm glad that she brought that up because that's a sentiment that's held by many Christians in this country. They think that they have the high moral ground. Yeah, but this is what I, I have to say on um, the role that religion plays in solving existential problems. The questions that we have as human beings. Where did we come from? Where are we going? Why do good things happen to bad people? Or why is there evil in the world? Religion purports to answer those, those questions. But I put it to you that it does so very poorly. It is inept. As I said, religion gives you the wrong answer to the right questions. So if it is, where did we come from? It is telling his children that we came from God, that God created us, when that is not necessarily the case. Then the other thing you said is um, that it, it, it fulfills that need for mythology that we have within us. And uh, I think that there's a difference between having a need for mythology and being indoctrinated. And religion does the latter, yet what we need is the former. So for mythology, it's, it's just stories. It's, um, it's a tradition that human beings have. So if we want to teach our children about tradition, about the nature of humanity, we can do that by teaching them stories about our various religions, or, or even if it's not religions, various cultures, various stories. Some of them can even be make-believe. You know, we have Goldilocks and the Three Bears, or uh, we have Cinderella, we have Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. All of those can do the same job that this religion is doing. The story of Abraham and him killing his son. So, with the Goldilocks and the Three Bears, that one, it, it, it is understood as a fictional story, and the child will be able to differentiate if they know that bears may not talk, and they, they will only put it in the realm of fiction. However, for religion, it, it, it makes it seem as though the story did more spotted the Red Sea so majestically. They believe that that is actually real, and that's the danger in it that it, it indoctrinates the child. It makes them believe that one way is the right way, that that, that way, the mythical way is the right way. Yet, that is not the case. Yeah. So, because of that fact, because of the dangers of religion perpetuating these uh, falsehoods in our children, then we need to discard it. And we, we also need to realize that just because something exists, just because something is there, doesn't mean that it is the best option. You know, it, it's kind of like a child who has an abusive parent. The parent beats them up, tortures them, maybe even sexually molests them. Yeah, but the, the child believes that this is how parenting is supposed to be, right? But, but that isn't the case. It, just because that's the version that is there doesn't mean that that's the best version. We as skeptics need to challenge what is happening in our society. Yes, we are predominantly a religious country. Yes, we are predominantly a religious continent. But is that the best way? Is it is it right to perpetuate a falsehood as true and we don't indoctrinate our children in, into it? Absolutely not. for me. That is what the excuse that I got mm -hmm. after failing my exam or after not attaining my goal. So that is how the religion does to a child, to think that everything is about miracle. Everything you need just to rely on God and with God will give you what you, he wants you to get. Thank you. Uh, lastly, why it is immoral? It's because the process, even the process of raising the child in a religious way is immoral in the first place. For example, you have for example, the Madarasa for the Islam, whereby children are beaten so that they can cram these verses. So you can't even the process alone, which is very wrong. But by the I used to go to Catholic, we call uh, something called the uh, Foundation ID. If you fail to attend that, that class, there was some punishment. So it is very moral in the first place. <laughs>
Mm-hmm. Uh, that's one of uh, another question. Why why do why do our uh, uh, African parents or let's say generally why do why do, do people feel the need of uh, of raising that their children through faith or religious faith? And the reason one of the reasons we kind of it's uh, we, we we have to say is that they 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 want their children to be a good person. They, so that so, so they, they 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 think that religion builds more. So they they take their children to Sunday school, learn the the ways of so I don't know God or Jesus, so that they become a good person. But now the question is that that, that faith really make that religious faith really make someone a good person. And the the answer is no. And instead of teaching them faith, teach them compassion and empathy, because empathy and compassion it's it matters more in making someone a good person rather than faith. And you don't need religion to be a good person. You need empathy and compassion to be a good person. Uh, the, an example here is compare our country Kenya to Japan or China. China is it's an atheist state, and here Kenya is an, it's a it's a religious state. A comparison of maybe cases of corruption. Does someone who is a good person does a good person practice corruption? Absolutely not. And I have uh, some statistics here from Global World Index on the most corrupt nations and the least corrupt nations. And you, you do a comparison of their of, of, on, on their religious aspect. And this most corrupt nations uh, religious or this least corrupt nation are they secular or they are religious? On the most corrupt nations, the list of the top 10, we have DRC Congo, number one. Number two, it is Cambodia. Number three, it is Cameroon. Number four, Gabon. Number five, Haiti. Number six, Bolivia. Number seven, Mexico. Number eight, our neighbors, Uganda. Number nine, Madagascar. And number 10, our uh, great republic, our, <laughs> our religious republic of Kenya. We are number 10 in the most corrupt nation. We need a Christian nation. We need a Christian nation. Does, does that faith, uh, does, does, did that faith help us in, in, in being morally good? That says no. And then on the list, the, the, the bottom 10 least corrupt nations. Number one, we have Denmark. Number two, we have Finland. Number three is New Zealand. Number four, Norway. Number five, Singapore. Number six, Sweden. Number seven, Switzerland. Number eight, Netherlands. Number nine, Germany. And number ten, Luxembourg. And when you do a comparison, the least corrupt nations, they are secular nations. And the most corrupt nations, they are predomin- predominantly religious nations. <laughs> you can respond to me. Uh, yeah, that just demonstrates we are Christian nation. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, just a minute. So, the, the point there is evidence is contrary to what is intuitive for us. Mm-hmm. We think that uh, in Kenya, the word uh, being Christian is used as if it's synonym for being good person. Uh, but evidence is contrary to that. Uh, just to still man who stand on point, I also have my niece who just went to high school and uh, we were having a discussion yesterday and she told me uh, she's learning theory and she's not in history. And uh, uh, she's uh, a Christian because by default, you know, here yeah, it's, it's fed into you by through an injection. Mm-hmm. But also she's learning history about um, evolution, about Kenya Pilekas, about uh, home happiness. And now she's having a a community dissonance because these are true stories that cannot be be obviously be true. Uh, even if you give Christianity a believer to say it's true, then this the history cannot be true. Then if this is true, theory cannot be true. And so what the problem is now uh, uh, the teacher is telling them to choose. The history teacher told them, me I'm just teaching you choose what you want to be. And uh, you see that if you put in cognitive well it's it's good and bad. It's good and bad because it's good because uh, at least they are not now just teaching one version. Because I remember our version of history was like a religious history sort of. 
the big job useless things like mathematical burial, so that they avoid teaching us the real history that is counter to religion. And this, they are started teaching evolution mostly because Catholic, uh, Catholic Church have recently adopted evolution as the best explanation for our for, uh, for their existence. And they only need a link with the, with the last four. Uh, so finally, stories are impressionable. So, uh, as we say, stories are very impressionable in terms of uh, teaching. Stories, in fact, the best people in terms of public speaking, I think she's a public speaking coach, she tells the best people who can speak, but are the ones who speak with stories. Uh, stories are very powerful for teaching. Uh, and even, that's, that's why, even fiction stories are very powerful. Just ask yourself why someone pays money, goes into a theater, watch a movie, which is fiction. You know it's fiction. Mm -hmm. But those two hours, you know, you just want to immerse yourself into that situation and get lost. And think that story is the truth. Mm -hmm. And you can have a, a villain and a hero that you are, a hero that you want to be the villain, and you actually want. So people believe those stories. The story of Harry Potter is very true. It's not true, but very powerful. Our traditional African societies, you know, we all grew up with thinking the hair is the, the, the hair is the most <laughs> general. <laughs> <laughs> it was all in the They are very, their stories are very powerful. And this is uh, in, in teaching things. So we, the, the only good thing is nobody thinks that hair is the most clever thing. So we are not only as a fact. This was to teach a certain moral more or less small of us mm. So we need to take that. The problem is if you believe that actually hair is very far from the spotted animals. Pigs are way ahead, rats are way ahead, uh or most prim most primates are way way ahead of us. But because those stories were meant to tell us stories, uh, to tell us that in beings. Yes. So it's always good to package that story uh, that message as a story. Mm. But make it clear that it's a story. Yes. It's not a fact. Jesus' story could have good and bad things in a story. Take the good things, and you don't have to take them from Jesus or from Yahweh or from Allah. You can take from Aristotle, you can take stories from Harry Potter, you can take stories from anywhere. Take the good and uh, leave the bad. Finally, the question is how do you pick the good and leave the bad? If these are the ones teaching you what is good and what is bad, secular morality and humanism. That's what we pick for another day. What shall we say is um, answer. Um, answering the question why parents teach, why African parents teach um, religion, I would say one because the time, like we don't, uh, parents, some parents don't have the time because most parents are working. And um, the burden of uh, teaching children morality is so enormous. Parents, they feel like taking them to church is, uh, is a good way because it, uh, it isn't like outsourcing. Yeah, it's a way outsourcing. And it is so easy, it's so like it's convenient, churches are open to four seven. So uh, they they don't have to worry about anything and they trust these churches. That's uh um one shocking thing is they trust these churches uh and their leaders, um uh, regardless of the moral implications. Another thing is um morality of course, um because um um, religion plays a huge role, especially in African societies, uh, in uh, moral indoctrination. That would be another case. Um, another one would be against conformity. You don't want to be left out, you don't want to be the old one out. And um, I guess some parents are forced to this because, yes, they want their child to conform to the society, not to be uh, the old would say. And they are yeah, like, that they are yeah. yeah, not. And they, you know, um, I mean, if, if you've ever been left out of a group, um, you feel uh, the, 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 the emptiness that comes to it, no one wants to wish that upon their children. Mm -hmm. So I guess they would rather take that day than uh, risk um, exposing their children to those negative effects. Yeah. And that's why you that's why it's called what? Export. We just away from church. That's, that's, why, that's why communication is a very important uh, people in this country. Because we have a group thinking, you know, we are talking in church. Mm -hmm. So, if, not just for the faith, but for the social aspect. So, as you said, conformity is a big uh, reason why people want to go to church. Because they don't want to be 
They want to be the fit in the society. They don't want to think out of the box. And the church now is that powerful for the court of communication. Okay, I think the, the, the reason why uh, parents do so is because they are parents themselves. Also, these, these parents were born in religious families, so they want to impose the same values imposed to their previous. I think it's high time parents will shift from this teaching that you know about religious faith to replace them with history, history of religion. Because once they look at the history of religion, they will understand that this God is claimed to be very moral. It's the same same God is very moral, killing people. For example, in the story, this very funny story of killing, instead of killing, of, 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 uh, during the 10 plagues, that story. Mm. So God killing a lot of people instead of just killing one person per Exactly. But who, when, when, they, when they, the children are taught about the history of religion, they also understand that the most religion, the, the most religious people in this world, or religion has caused a lot of death, genocides, when you look, when you look at it historically. Once we understand this, they develop a, an attitude of critical thinking. Mm -hmm. Because, for example, in this case of the Crusades, whereby the Islam were fighting with the, with the Christians, once they understand that, that aspect, that these, these two groups were very religious, but at the same time, they commit a lot of crime because of killing a lot of people. So from that angle, children will, write, will be raised to be more morally upright than using their religious faith. Exactly. I, I would like to be enforce his points and also what Nikki said. So in response to the question of why do African parents take their children to religious institutions, um, he had said that one of the reasons is that it is because of need to delegate. They feel like teaching morality is such an enormous task that it's just easier to, to, to delegate it to someone else. However, I think that the greatest responsibility most citizens have is parenting. If, if, if you have children, that is. I think delegating that duty is highly irresponsible. You have it within you to pass over your principles. Why would you want some stranger somewhere? Even if it's not a stranger per se, but that is not someone who mimics your values. Wouldn't you want your child to be a reflection of yourself? So I would implore Kenyan parents out there, stop it. Stop, stop passing all that back to someone else. Be the bigger man or woman and do it yourself. Raise your child. Teach your child the principles and values that you hold dear. Now, on the other issue of how, what do you teach children beyond aid? How do you raise them to be outstanding citizens of the country? Firstly, as Mori said, it's important to emphasize our humanity and empathy. I, I think that is essential in secular morality. Put yourself in another person's shoes. I think that's so simple, it's so intuitive, and it is so uncontroversial. Nobody can argue against that. So you just tell your child, how would you feel if this person comes here and does that to you? Yeah? You feel bad. So always put yourself in the other person's shoes whenever you need to make a moral decision. That's a very good guideline. It's, it's called the golden rule, and it is present across cultures around the world. That's, that's how I would approach morality. Then when it comes to critical thinking, I would teach children religion. However, I would teach them all religions. There's somebody wise who said that when you teach children one faith, you indoctrinate them. But when you teach them multiple faiths, you inoculate them. To inoculate is to make somebody immune to something. To indoctrinate is to make somebody believe something is true when it is not. So we want to inoculate them. We don't want to indoctrinate them. Let's, let's, let's tell them what the Hindus believe and how they practice their faith. Let's tell them what the Muslims believe. Actually, I found that here in Kenya, religions are very ignorant of each other. They think that they are 
true, that their belief is true, simply because they haven't had what happens across the fence. If they did, then they would realize, hey, we can't all be right. Yeah, so uh, that's one thing I would do. I would also teach them critical thinking and at the essence of critical thinking is the idea of questioning, of, of finding out why. Ask, asking why. Don't be content with what. You've, you've told me I, I need to do this and this. I need to wake up and why do I need to wake up? And because I need to fulfill my obligations. Yeah. So I think that's a good approach. And lastly, science. I would teach them indeed the scientific method, as Maurice had said, that you observe something, you come up with a hypothesis, you conduct an experiment, and it doesn't even have to uh, require a laboratory. It doesn't even have to relate to some complicated thing. It can be something so simple as my tooth is aching. What could be the reason behind my tooth is aching? Or I have lost my keys. So how do I find my keys using the scientific method? So uh, after you do an experiment, you, you have the, the observation, you create a hypothesis, you do an experiment, and then you, you reinforce the hypothesis by creating a theory. That's the scientific method, as simple as that. Children can understand it as early as two, they can understand it. Let's not underestimate their intelligence. You are capable as parents of building upstanding citizens who are moral and who are critical thinkers using those methods. So what I'd say, I'm just um, less faith, more morals, less belief, more actions. They teach their children about the religion, the more or the, because they want them to be morally right according to their, according to their opinion, because that is how even the parents were indoctrinated in that way. So they think, even in, in Kenya, for example, the majority is Christian. So they think the Christian is only the one that can offer the best moral. So to them, they think they are right, and they want their children to follow that the right path. So that is why they try all they can to teach their children the moral according to the Christianity or according to the religion they believe in. So that is obvious, even us. As APS program believer, we want to teach our children what we think is right. But what we are trying to advocate is this. What you, you are teaching your children, is it evidence-based or is it just something that you cannot be able to verify? And what do you want your child to be taught? Something that is contrary to your opinion or to your, your stance. If no, when you want to teach others what you believe, and you don't want your child to be taught what they believe. So as him was that, and that is why we, we also advocate for them, and the occasion to be changed, mm -hmm. or to be amended for those cases. Because we don't want to be, you are Muslim, and you want to, the somebody is wanting to teach you Christianity, or vice versa. Let's focus upon each opinion, but not upon what you want other to be. Thank you. And I want to finish. I want to finish by saying, with or without religious faith, a good person will always be a good person, and a bad person will always be a bad person. But for a good person to do bad things, teach him religious faith. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs>